Uh. Hello there fellow modellers, Steve here. Now this video is a completion of me Supermarine Walrus for Frankie Deer's pre-war group build. A review of how far I've got with me Hornet for Storm and Norm's Canadian group build. A few shout outs and a review of the Crusader I'm going to do for Speedy's Jets 1960s jets and props. So we'll start off with a message for Freddy. Now I hear that you have to go into hospital for a couple of operations. And you'll be okay in hospital, they'll look after you, so keep your spirits up. And another message for Chris. Everybody's looking after you, shouting out for you. You will be okay. So keep strong. Right. Now we'll go into the Hornet. Ooh. And this is how far I've got with it. I hope you can see this. Oh, there you go. I've got everything done there. There's just a few bits of modifications to put on. Now I'm deciding whether to put the pilot in. Because I've said on previous videos, I'm not very good at painting pilots. Not this small, anyway. I've started... He's got the... His flesh face on, but whether I finish it off, I'll have to have a look. I've got to look on the internet to see what the colour scheme is for Canadian Hornet pilots. But otherwise, it's going fine. It's a very nice, clean jet. So we'll put that to one side. Now, there's a few other people are doing the Canadian group build, but a lot of them are doing armour. But I've got a, a message using me uh, subscribing of the lad from Poland, Radzi76. I don't know what your proper name is, but I'll just put your call sign in. Now, you're doing what's known as American service as a B-18 Bolo bomber but it was known as Canadian service as a Rigby. Now, I'd never heard of it, but it flew with the Canadian Air Force. But like a lot of planes in the pre-war period, this appeared for a few, oh, three or four years, but it was obsolete superseded by more advanced types. But it did participate in the initial stages of the invasion of the Philippines by Japan in 1941 and Pearl Harbor but he's doing it in the markings of the Royal Canadian Air Force now he did say that I don't know whether this was the first one or whether it was the first Canadian aircraft to sink a U-boat so it'll be interesting to see the contrast between that and the one that Frankie did for his pre-war group build which was in United States Army Air Corps colours I look forward to seeing that Right, now we'll go on to me walrus. Now, first of all, on one of Frankie's builds from the past, he had a 148 walrus, which was fantastic. The rigging was on. Now, I never did rigging on this one. It's far too small. And I've had a few problems with the wings, because I'd never built a biplane for years. But I'll show you what I've done. And it's, it's worked out OK. I'll just get my camera and move it round a bit. And there it is. On its launching reel. From a cruiser or a battleship. Now I've got to be delicate with this because it's, if it falls off, the top wing's likely to come off. As it did when I was painting it. And you didn't want to hear all the obscenities that were set up here. I'm sure my wife heard them. And my daughter. But I'm moving it round slowly there. And there it's on its launch pad. And there it is again. Now this was the one I had the problem with. The top wing. Pointer. There you go. Now we've got a tip off UK modelling about how to do the top wing. I tried it, but it never worked. There was a bit of uh, fit issues where the engine was. 
but I managed to sort it out as best I can. See, if it moves, it'll fall off. So I'll just take it off there. And I'll pull it on the yeah, right and we'll have a closer look at it. And obviously you can see the pilots and the air crew. <laughs> they're okay, but they're not up to Panzerman's standard. I managed to get a, make a good job, I think, of where are we? the uh, glazing around the canopy. Because i seen that and I thought, oh god. Because I'm still trying to uh, master that art. But it'll... I'll, oh no. Nearly went on the floor again. As it did when it painted. You can see that the engines, are, it's what's called a pusher engine, and there's the air gunner at the back. Now I'll lift it up and show the bottom. Floats on, and it's what's called an amphibian, it can land on water and land because it's actually operated from aircraft carriers as well. No, I had really real problems with the, the struts there, but it, it, it's worked out okay. I'm quite pleased with it, and it's in its pre-war colour scheme. Well, I'll have a look at this. This is scratch built. Now, this is this is a fantastic piece of engineering. This, if I do say so myself. Obviously, you can see that that is off a pontoon bridge. The sides. Now, these, the tubes, they're basically just cotton buds cut into lengths and I made the how would they call that the sledge or whatever the catapult sledge that's just based made out of one of the uh, parts of the pontoon bridge with some uh, cotton boards and some bit of the framework there and the that there I don't know what they call that but I'll just say it's a disc where it's moved to go to different directions. That is actually a milk bottle top. So I'll put it back on. Hopefully it'll not fall off. And we'll leave it on there. And there's another view of it. And I'll just turn it around a bit without... Oh, I'm not going to... There's another view, a rear end view. Now you can see there's a lot of... What you call silvering. I don't know if you can see it, but I can. Around the markings there. I don't know whether that's because it's an old kit and the markings are a bit worn, but there's nothing you can do about that. So that's that finished, and I'm actually, again, the last one to finish it on a group build. One of these days I'll be the first to finish it, and everybody will see it. Ah, oh, Steve's finished first! Once in a lifetime! Everybody else finished theirs weeks ago. But it got there, and I'm, that's the 1st of December, which it ended today. So it's done. Put that down there. And now we'll go on to review the Crusader. What I'm doing for Speedy's. 1960s Jets and Props group build. Pardon me. And that's what I'm doing. Point now. The F8 Crusader, and it's a Tallery. I think that's how you pronounce it right. Colourful US Navy markings. It actually has about, I think it's three or four US Navy markings. And one that flew with the French Navy, or the Aero Navy Arl. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> There's a, a, two of them from VF194 
and VF191. Now I like that colour scheme. And also that one, that's VF24. I think there's only three and the French one. I'll have to decide which one I'm going to build. Now we'll do a review of it. And here's the instruction leaflet. Now it's got plenty of paint callouts. There's a bit of there's a decal, a decal to go on the seat and the control column and the sides of the oh, the box. Call it the box. So there's quite a bit of detail there. Detail in the wheel wells. But obviously not in the cockpit sides. Plenty of armour and missiles. And you can either have the canopy up or closed. Which is good. Down there we'll get the markings now. Wonderfully colourful markings. It'll, I think it'll be either be that one or that one that I'll do. I'll have to decide. They all look great. And the the markings are Italian made, so I don't know whether that's good or bad. And these the sprues. Plenty of armour there, bombs, missiles, and there's the clear. It looks alright, it's protected in this plastic bag. I think they're the undercarriage doors and the missile rails. Not much detail on the wings, but it's not to worry. Now there isn't much detail. There, like I says, there's not much. In fact, there's no detail in the cockpit at all. Just on the wheel wells. And I think that's an air brake. At the back, I'm not sure. But, not to worry. Now on this group build, Speedy, who started, he's actually doing an F5, Freedom Fighter. Now I sent him a message yesterday, and it says which markings are you going to do them in? Because I've did one in one of the Aggressor Squadrons. And I've told him it's on one of my earlier videos, so if he wants to watch it, to check it out. But hopefully he'll do something different. And Frank is doing an F4C Phantom of the US Air Force in Vietnam era colours which will be good so I don't know what anybody else is doing I'll have to have a look on YouTube again tonight and there's a few people that are doing the Canadian group build uh, Chris and Alex they need to finish theirs Alex has did a V1 and his dad Chris has did a Meteor and they look good and Nigel is doing a P40 because he actually put on a message that it was the first time he'd actually sprayed camouflage and it worked out well it looked good so that's it for that now it's the 1st of December so it's one month to go one month to my group build my carrier aviation carrier aircraft of the 20th century now my Phantom kit is packed away somewhere so I'll get that out later on but there's a few people who have uh, signed up for it Frankie has, I don't know what he's doing though Chris and Alex Alex is doing a Corsair and his dad, Chris, is doing a Sea Vixen 148 skill which should be good and I'll see if anybody else has done it but apart from that, that's it for, that's it for me tonight and I'm pleased with me uh, Walrus come out really well so that's it for me tonight as I'm said on me, me videos before I'm away in the shower now 
and it's cold outside because I've got my heater running here right uh, so keep modeling all you good people out there and I'll see you on the next video turn on out